My name is Sean Brosnan. I'm the head cross country and track coach at Newbury Park High School. This will be my uh, seventh year as head coach. Uh, we're coming up to altitude. Today is day one at altitude training camp where we come for four weeks. This is our fourth year coming for four weeks and uh, I think it's just a, a great thing for the kids. You know, we have, we have a guy's house, we have a girl's house. And, you know, more than the physiological benefit, I think them being up here just creates um, a big, you know, big cohesiveness between the teams, um, you know, more of a bonding experience. But overall, we get really good training in. And I think that, you know, you, when you come to altitude, we're just, I think we're just about 7,000 feet, just under 7,000. Most of our runs are, are well above that. So I think that it gets us fit quickly so that when we uh, go back down the hill at, at the end of the month and into August, you know, we're ready to roll and be the fittest that we need to be for, you know, August, September and October and, and have uh, one of the best seasons that, that we plan on having. Yeah, you can just put two people in each yeah, 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 yeah. 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 That would be crammed yeah. in one. It does pull out of the pull out. Yeah. 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 So, all right, so so guys, you guys get start, the seniors start getting their rooms, then we'll go from there, because right. I just want to make sure people know what they're doing. Yeah. So, you, okay, you guys are in there. How are you guys seniors? <laughs> and then, so, wait, so does everyone else know? Rooms? Yeah. Where are you going? Where are you staying? We'll, we'll, we'll meet, Aaron, me and Aaron will stay in that room, and then Colin, and then and Daniel. Uh, and Daniel. And then, okay, so then there is... Uh, we ran this morning up at Skyline Drive. It's at the top of, uh, I, think, I think Snow Summit is where it's the top of. We kind of drive up the back way from, from Bear. It, it's, I don't, I don't know the exact altitude, I don't think. I think it's close to 8,000 feet, but it kind of climbs. It's up and down the whole time. It was kind of, a, kind of a crazy run to do for the first time. Ironically, when we were driving going out to dinner last night, Colin told me, he's like, yeah, we ran Skyline as our first run last year so I was like okay let's do it again because I wasn't going to give him Skyline but then I was like oh I did it last year I might as well do it this year um, so yeah so we went there it's just a tough run but it makes you strong there's enough flat and downhill that I think it evens itself out from the uphills but it's, it, it's, it's a tough run just to run the whole thing um, some people just running it's good but you know our top guys ran pretty easy maybe 650s or something like that but that's actually pretty t tough for that run um, yeah, and we love to do it. You know, we do it once or twice a week, and it's part of the routine up here. And it, it's just a, it's a good um, builder for the summer. Yeah, Skyline, I would definitely never do as a recovery run. Um, you could run e like today was an easier day on it. Um, last year we did like a ten mile fartlek on it, which was really hard. Like I was actually kind of excited that they were able to do that as well as they did. You know, and run like you know low sixes on that thing is brutal, but. Um, yeah, I would never do it. I would use it as like just a, a solid, like what I, what I would call a training run, um, that effort, because like even running six something pace is pretty hard. So that's, that's the way we do it. It's never going to be recovery, never really easy, although you could run at an easier pace, but I would call it a training run. So that's where it is. Tomorrow will be really easy at Holcomb Valley. Um, and then, you know, th we're going to kind of rush things a little bit and then we'll probably have another like training run day at Hocum Valley. Then Friday, we're going to go and do uh, a tempo at the range. Oh, yeah, yeah. Everyone's going to probably be nice. Everyone's a little bit. Maybe some of the guys will be a little bit longer, but yeah, I won't be. I know. See, that's Where are the girls? Are, are the girls dead? Where'd they go? The bathroom, I guess. Are the girls over there? Yeah. The bathroom's a bad. Um, let's go. Let's go eight. All right. Let's just go. Uh, yeah, just easy. All right. No, like, like yeah, this is history. Yo, the future. Yeah. Wait, How about we once upon a time in Hollywood? I like it when he's like driving the like the um, Ferrari or whatever, and he comes back and he's like, oh my god, I didn't 
dented at all. He thinks it's perfect. And in the morning, he walks outside, and the car literally looks like it looks like any single any like internet internet meme about like a video game or something. It's like destroyed. Guys, yeah, hey guys, let's go. Listen, girls, let's go. Let's go regular mileage today. Um, you normally do. You get you should know the loops, right? We'll be out there. You could add on. I think the main loop here is like five. Six well, six if you go around the yeah yes it is if you go around the outside, um, so come back and get get your regular mileage in and yeah let's get going, let's get going on this. I want everyone to start together so we get everyone together, and then we'll come back and do strides. Is that everyone? Start. Go. A workout that we, you know, we have a lot of crazy workouts that we do. That I think that that people I don't know if they necessarily believe in. Like you know, sometimes I like sharing them, sometimes I don't because then the people are like, oh, you just you're bragging about a workout. But we do. There, there's certain things. I mean, I've seen um, you know uh, my top guys do the classic prefontaine workout, the 30 40 workout, where they go 30 seconds, 40 seconds, 30 seconds, 40 seconds. They do four miles of it. People think that no, no, there's no. They do four miles of it. They do three and a half, but it's it's a build up. They start off at a mile. They start off two miles, but stuff like that. So like that that is an impressive workout. I remember when Nico was doing over four miles of that, and I was telling his college coach Mike Smith like, "Hey, this is what this kid's doing." He almost didn't believe it. He was like, "There's no way." I'm like, "Yeah," and it, and again, but if you looked at his training, it was progressing towards that. It's not overtraining. We give him plenty of rest, and anyway, I I think that's an impressive workout. I think the ability to handle that pace and run those paces. But that's what we teach our kids. That's one thing I teach is, is pace. Like these kids know paces. They understand what they're hitting. They know when we do a tempo, like what's too fast, what's too slow. I, I talk to a lot of high school coaches and they, and they tell me tempos and I'm going, what in the world is the definition of a tempo? Because what you're, what that, that kid only races 1510. Why is he running 1550 for, you actually, could, you need to slow him down in order to progress him in his races. And I think, you know, that 30, 40 workout is just an example of something we might throw in there here and there, or I, or I, I work on that they're able to do that by the end of the season or something like that. That's usually we do that in track, 
but that's something that I think is pretty good. And I think they'd be surprised like when we're in the middle of a workout and I'm like, guys, I want you to throw in a 410. We'll do four times a mile. And I'm like, I want you to throw a 410 in a number three. And they're like, I mean, it just doesn't seem possible, but it is possible. And it's, and again, well, how is it overtraining? These kids believe they can do it. And you know, it doesn't always work out. I've seen Colin bomb workouts before and I've stopped them halfway and said, you're done. That, but that's your job as a coach. And I think when the coach can find can figure out when to do that and when not to do that. And then the, and then the athletes trust the coach to say, okay, he made the right choice for me and I trust him for stopping me. It's not because I did a bad job. That's a good thing. I have had, you know, some coaches write training out the whole summer is written out. I don't even know what I'm doing past Saturday and this is Tuesday, you know, and that that's the truth. Not because I'm unprepared, just because I want to see how they feel tonight and tomorrow. I write training every two, three days. I know what roughly I'm doing in the next few weeks, but that's what I do. And I think that, you know, I think doing stuff like that and um, I don't know, I think that 30, 40 workouts a good example of something that is deceivingly really difficult to do because it might not sound that hard. Oh, big deal. You're running 70s but try that workout. And if you could hit exactly those paces, it shows control, um, you know, and it, and it shows the ability to, man, flush stuff out when you run and be able to change pace. So, um, so different things have changed in the NCAA since I've started coaching um, high school. You used to be able to be recruited, I think like your last day of school, your junior year. So going into your senior year summer, um, you'd start talking to coaches. Now, it's they pulled it back a full year that like the last day of school, your sophomore year, or whatever that day is, you could start talking to a coach and you know be recruited and you have your restrictions within those, those um, two years. But, so you, we have guys on my team, you know, sophomores that are running, you know, 407 or whatever it was last year, um, 843 and they're getting calls. Um, so it, it's just a whole different dynamic of, you know, I have, you know, guys on my team that have been on three recruiting trips already as a junior, you know, where, you, you know, some athletes in the past, they could, you, well, you couldn't do that. You couldn't go until you were a senior. So I, I think it's good and bad. Um, but, you know, so that has changed and it's changed the whole the, the game a little bit. And um, I don't know if we've seen like any big offers come in a junior year, but um, they definitely have started the process. So I think maybe even for college coaches, they might have to do a little bit more research and recognize talent earlier because you could lose an athlete that way. I mean, I think, you know, I could have an athlete that's heading into his senior year and you get a call for the first time. He already has it narrowed down to three schools. Now he's, he's already saying like, well, I already know my three. I'm not going to add an extra one in unless it's something they really wanted to look at. So it has changed. So I don't know um, what the coaches think personally, but I think, you know, getting on and, and, being able to recognize talent is going to be, I, I think those coaches might succeed a little bit more in college because they're, they're, on, the, they're on top of the game a little bit more. All right, guys, so um, regular mileage today. Uh, same thing you did last time yesterday, Hocum Valley, mileage-wise, but make sure just a little bit quicker today. Not like not a, an easy run, not a recovery run. Tomorrow is like kind of a workout. We'll figure out what we're going to do when we get there, but just, yeah, just make it solid run, not too easy, just solid run, you guys know. We'll be out there, so, so good. That's it, right, not these guys? Yeah. What are you guys doing? I think they're trying to like map out the route. Yeah. We, we do it like a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what? Oh, I don't know. They're deciding on which and combination then, of you guys. And, then, guys and then on the way back, we do we do the small loop at the very end. We're just starting the, like, the whole loop. And then I thought you were going once back we get up to the hill. Once, once, once we go down the hill, we go left up the hill straight away. So yeah, you're not going to go out to the horses. No, yeah. we're going left up the hill and then turn left after the hill. Are you guys going to film the run? Because I, I can send you the, the route. I won't get reception. But, um... But like no, so so I know I, I know the do a screenshot. Yeah, I know the route though. So okay. you, when you come up that, so you just you're not gonna go down to the horses. You're gonna come back. You're gonna go up the hill. Left then you're gonna make a left right away. And then, yeah. and then you're just gonna backtrack and come back this way. Yeah, but then on the way back we're gonna enter the small like yeah, campground the inner loop. loop. In yeah, yeah, I know that. Yeah, yeah, so you're gonna you're gonna do the loop, go around, come yeah. in, go like this, and then come back. Because we yeah. think that's best. I mean, even though today's not a training run, but uh, it's still it's better for like quicker runs because then you come up to the flat part and you can because up here you can get the paces lower. Okay, you know, that's fine. Add ons yeah, yeah. down there are fun and scenic, yeah, yeah. but there's always a little bit more hill, and then you have that last hill that you're always like, oh, how's that gonna feel? Yeah, yeah. that's fine. Like a chunk of it. I've done that before. Let's get going. Have a divot.
Come and step on my doorknob yesterday. What? There's like a little metal like chunk that's like sticking. <laughs> that are knocking on the door that want to be a little bit better, um, you know, get over that hump, I, I honestly think, you know, maybe you, know, you don't need a month-long Big Bear camp. Uh, maybe you don't need to go to altitude. That's fine. That's just what we chose to do. But you got to do something with your team. You got to do something outside the box. You know, the best coaches I ever talked to have always um, accepted uh, other coaches that are outside the box. That that's what I hear all the time, and it doesn't mean you know you know. There's always people say crazy things. People like, oh, you recruit, you do this, you have, you have talented athletes. I mean, that's of course we have talented athletes. So do a lot of other schools. There, there's there's other schools out there that should be just as fast as us, and I believe that. Um, you know, but you, you have to have the dedication, and I'm not just the coaches, but the kids. And I would say create something. Create some. I mean. Show the kids that you're going to give more than they can. That And every every time they give, you give more. And just keep doing that. And, and don't be, I mean, it's, it is part of your life. And, you know, I, I understand people have families and other things going on. But, you know, again, we're talking about being the best ever. If, it, there's, if you take any Olympic gold medalist or you take any um, probably artist or someone who's great, the amount of sacrifice they give is unbelievable. And it's not just running hard every day. If people think that, you know, we just, run tempos extremely difficult and we run 90 miles a week they're out of their mind we don't do any of those things um, we do you know but we're also not a, not afraid to try and change training I think if people talk to my my um, if they looked at my my famous yellow uh, training book that I keep when I come up here um, you know big bear they would look at last summer it's completely different than this summer and it's different from the summer before there's no clear path how to get there you got to keep evolving as a coach. You got to keep talking to other coaches and you got to figure out what's the best for your athletes or who those athletes are that I'm coaching and w and what's going to make those kids great, not the kids last year. Like, how am I going to get my team better than last year? That's my goal. Right now we're at a place called The Ranch. It's 
is probably the only flat road in all of Big Bear that we know of, or that we've been told of. It's about a mile strip on the dirt, like a fire road straight out. We do all of our tempos or, or cruise miles here, whatever you want to call them. This is the first week um, at camp. We've only been here four days. So it's uh, we don't want to go too hard with them. We're just going to do, some of the kids are doing a mile, minute rest, a mile. Other guys are doing um, two mile, minute rest, a mile, just to get used to it. By the end of the week, I mean, by the end of the month, we'll have our top guys doing a you know four mile tempo here. Our top girls will be doing a three mile tempo up here, just can, all the way through. We just want to adjust. So the times are fairly slow for them today, uh, and then they'll just adjust from there. So we have someone like Lex, uh, you know, one of our top guys. He'll, I told him to go like 5'10", 5'15", pace for two miles, and then same thing for his last mile with the minute rest, so nothing too crazy. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of different workouts that we, I give my, my athletes, especially the, the new kids coming in. You know, you have an eighth grade kid and is in ninth grade now. It's like you can't, you just have to adjust everything. I mean, a lot of those kids have been barely running, you know, um, mileage wise, or they just don't have time on their feet. So we just have to adjust everything. But, you know, the guy, our top guys and top girls are at a pretty elite level. So, you know, they, they can do some, some pretty pretty good workouts and pretty hefty workouts but it really comes down to just adjusting it for an individual I mean I'll have six different workouts for my um, two varsity teams girls and guys sometimes I just I adjust them totally and they know not to be offended when I give somebody a lesser workout than someone else because they're just not ready for it and that guy will still be on varsity you know I, I have guys that are ninth man that are running harder workout or longer workouts than guys that are fifth man they're just not physically ready for it but they just race faster so I adjust things accordingly all the time I try to be as detailed as I can with the guys and, and everybody on Newbury Park knows that like, you know, if I cut them from a workout or pull them or give them a, you know, um, you know, less strenuous workout that they're, they're not offended by it. It's not like I, I don't believe in them. I just, I'm trying to do what's better for them individually. And I think that's like key, you know, a blanket workout that everybody does the same thing. It, it's kind of silly for me. Um, I think everyone has the same type of workout that day, but I really think you got to adjust it individually. And I think that's a huge part of it. I mean, We'll do, we'll do multiple different style of workouts within a workout um, for my guys. And, and they know, like when I say you're done, nobody's like, oh man, I failed today. It's like, no, I mean, you know, I, I've seen pros, I, I've seen pros um, get, you know, cut from workouts and that's, that's part of the deal. And, and they're mature enough to know that, you know, oh, oh this, is, this is what's best for me and they trust me. Who do I expect from Lex, uh, you know, Aaron, one of some of my top guys. Uh, we don't have Leo running today. He actually got a, a pretty bad cold. He's fine, but we're going to run him this afternoon instead of this morning. We let him sleep in. But, uh, you know, he's had some bad luck with being sick lately, I guess. But, you know, our top guys, I'm going to put them, you know, I, I told them to go 510, 515 pace for their miles. And, you know, up here it's just under 7,000 feet. But these guys are actually running a lot faster right now. I think they're right around like 505 pace. But that should be pretty easy for them. Um, you know, even at altitude, these guys are fit. I mean, most people have to remember that they're 1345K guys, so they're, they're pretty fit. I think just as their coaches, things that I can tell right away by looking at them. I don't know if there's any cues that I could explain to people, but just knowing them so well, I could usually tell how they're Perfect, take that minute, you're 515, 516, nice guys, perfect, perfect.
Just go like 520 on the way back. You're good. Five forty, five forty one, perfect, forty three. That's it, guys. So, guys, take the minute off of them. Five fifty, take the minute off of them. So, start your minute now. All go together. That's it, Tiffany. Five fifty five. Nice, Danielle. Six oh seven, six oh eight. So a little quick, but that's good. I'll be back right after this. So guys, you're gonna have to get your times because we're gonna head back and try to get these other guys. Nice, six twenty five, six twenty six. Good job. Good. That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, perfect. The way that, the B way, yeah. even though it was like five eight. I'm proud of you. Oh. Yeah, no, that's good. I mean, shoot, everyone's good. You guys are like ahead of last year. Like everything's good. You, like I said, Jim, even next week and the week after, things you'll still feel like this, but like you'll be faster and you'll feel good. So you'll just get used to the altitude. You'll be fine. So it's good. All right, let's get your recovery, and then uh, we'll get going. Yeah. Brandon, how was the last? Was good? Yeah, it was fine. Was it far? Like, was it alright? Yeah, yeah. Just getting used to it. You'll be fine. I mean, yeah, it was a little tough, but there's nothing yeah. new. Just it's get used to it. Yeah. No worries. Yeah, the, the upcoming week uh, is, is kind of, a, I think, a big week because we'll start adding a few of those doubles in. We only did one this week, an easy three-miler. Um, we'll add some doubles in, and we'll just, yeah, their mileage. I, I don't want to say some of the guys will increase, but we'll start doing, like, actual training runs where the some, we'll have a recovery run, training run, easy runs. We'll start differentiating the different type of runs. You know, this week was all about just getting used to altitude. This is their fourth day of running here. So, you know, and it's actually pretty tough. They won the Skyline already, um, you know, had some easy runs, and now they just did a, like a kind of a mini workout. And then, yeah, we'll get going, and three more weeks of this will be, will be pretty good for them.